Can't do that, ref. Send him off. Hey! Come on, Rangers. Come on, Rangers. He missed the whole game. Oh, nice the new season has begun for Mark White and his Dorking Wanderers side. Tips for the title before a ball was kicked, the Wanderers have amassed a disappointing four points from their opening three games. A late penalty miss on the opening day of the season led to a 1-0 defeat against Concord Rangers, while a last-minute goal a week later earned their first win of the season against St Albans. A 2-2 draw with Braintree followed, meaning Dawkins sits smack bang in the middle of the National League South table going into their home fixture against Hungerford. And before Mark can turn his attention to the next game, he's going to meet the women's team, having installed his close friend and son of footballing legend George Callum Best as the Dorking Wanderers FC ladies chairman. How are you? You alright? Good, yeah. Oh, good. Callum, by the way. Hey, yeah, Sean. Sean, nice to meet you. Nice Pleasure to meet you. Um, and I think you look great like this. I think this looks fucking good. I, I, I love it. Cool. Very good look. This professional. I like the odd professional look. No, I am professional. We um, just... It took some convincing to, to go into the, the women's game, but I've been so impressed by it all and it's an, it's an exciting project. And what's Callum got to do with it? Women's chairman. Uh, Callum's outside looking in, people might think, well, what's all this about? But ultimately, um, it's about a guy that's first love is football um, and, um, and he's never been involved in football. And yet, he's, yet, yet he's, you know, his heritage and his family, um, that's uh, what he's renowned for. So he's, you know, he, he's also really big on um, inclusion. Um, in life in general and I think he just felt that the kind of women's football movement and his background in football would be great. We're friends and it's a little opening for him to try and take us forward. Right, I'll be quick because I've got a game, obviously the men's team got a game today, but um, I'm like delighted to meet you all. So I'm Mark, I'm the owner and the first team manager still. We genuinely started as a bunch of mates. We was in the lowest possible fucking level of football. The only teams lower than us were fucking alphabetical. We were literally, the first season we started, we were in the low, we had something like 10,000 teams in the country above us. I fucking hate losing. I hate fucking mediocrity. I hate people that just do things to fucking enjoy it. I fucking hate all of that, right? All I wanna do is fucking win. Callum's a good friend of mine. Callum's got, you know, some great qualities in life and you'll get to know him. The number one being integrity and he's a fucking winner, okay? And obviously he's got a legacy of football behind him, okay? And he's coming in uh, to take this section forward. It's not a fucking gimmick. We're doing it to kick on, you know? I had boys that were that talented there playing park football that ended up, you know, still playing there. We've got boys now, been here six, seven years, playing in the first team. They had four promotions in that time. So I want you to be part of it. You're the, you're the old one, aren't you? 38? Yeah. I want her in a fucking mobility scooter scoring a winner, right? In five years. Right? The mentality is we have to win, but ideally with you. I'm going to go now and start having a go at them. Yeah, in preparation. I'm a very angry person right now because everyone's fucking injured. Um, and I'm going, to leave, I'm going to leave with Callum. And we're really serious. I mean, don't, don't look, get the look and all that and take this the wrong way, yeah, okay? We're serious. Was serious. He looked so fucking smart, didn't he? No, no, no. I was, when he turned up, I was like, oh, fuck off. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, um, the thing is, we're serious about what we do. Good. So I'm going to leave you with Callum. Just say good luck to Mark. Yeah, cheers, guys. Cheers. Went to Concord first day, had 37 crosses, 19 shots, lost, uh, lost 1 0, uh, missed a penalty last minute, um, lost Wes Fogden for the whole season. Who've been our best? He's been our best player pre-season. Lost Jason Pryor, our main striker, and Matt Briggs, our main winger, danger men, um, to hamstring and and, and uh, ribs. Um, Nar McManus to a bad back, and then James McShane got COVID just before Saturday's game, our third game. So we, we we're in a genuine position where we've gone we've gone into competitive matches. No disrespect to the rest of the squad with minimum six that would be our first 11. I remember before the season started, you said to the players, statistically speaking, 
four or five of you are going to be injured by the time the season starts. Which really starts. fucking pissed me off, because even when I said it, I thought I shouldn't fucking say it. But, you know, really, it's something I should just know internally. That, But I say it to kind of, to make sure that people that, people that maybe don't think they're in reckoning, they don't ever lose focus, don't start thinking, do I belong here? I do it to keep them on the toes, rightfully so. But I mean, I do it every, every, every season, but we've, um, we've just had a very big bad run of luck there. Um, and now we've just got to be careful. Yeah, and that one, yeah, please mate. Thanks, Baz. We all in, Kano? Sammy? Good to see you, mate. Alfie, Keely, yeah? In pain still? Oh my fucking gosh. Oh, I don't push it to the other side. Can you see any of our volunteers, Baz? John, can you push this from this side? I think it's broke, though. Fuck it, mate, we pushed it, that's coming through here. There it is! Wait, are you good? Leave it there, leave it there, yeah, fuck me. Oh, uh, <laughs> 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 I thought Saturday we showed a lot of qualities, Saturday. I thought we showed a lot of qualities. I watched the video back. I thought the defensive qualities were fucking good. I thought Bobby, Baz, Ed, Wargs, first half. Ain't easy, any level of football, defending bombs when you're a foot shorter. I thought we were fucking excellent defensively. I really do. So we need to be the same again today. That's just down to discipline and our structure. So listen, in terms of them, now, they might play 3-5-2, they did last year, but they've not played it all season, okay? But he might, because he might go, do you know what, we got beat Saturday, we know how they play, we'll match up. If it's a 3-5-2 competition, we know the gig, it's a spare man, we've got an overload at the back, and I'd rather us have the overload, being a better football team than them. Brilliant, no problem. But the aim will be, the wings are always shut off, so you must find the opposite fullback. That is the plan of the game. They are looking to go long the whole time, to nobody in particular. It can be really interesting to see how he remotely gets into the game, because he's got no big players to aim at, and because we're a three-five-two, it's a full press. We, the game won't be won in there for us, boys, okay? Similar to Saturday. That game, we were never gonna win that game in there in the month of Sundays. That really is just a flight path. It's just, a, it's something we're trying to play through to get it into danger areas, okay? They have to kick, bollock and bite, but they are very big on the appeal, so you've got to be as big on the appeal. Very important, okay? They'll work fucking hard as a team. That's the bottom line. But you can work as hard as you want. I mean, we could go and play Man United and work hard. We wouldn't touch the fucking ball, right? So it's about making sure we do our bits. The reason they're in this league is they'll have a dead ball, right? And it might win them a game. They've got a striker that can score 25 in this division, okay? and they've got lads that want to win and they're all playing together. A couple of small details, and I said it Saturday, again, you didn't get it right. When you get the last third throws, drop Keely in, he's the best one holding it up. He's McShane in the situation. Yeah, movement, movement, Keely. He backs in well, he protects the ball well. You get these little fine margins, fine margins, boys. If we're looking for fucking shit flicks down the line, you are. And you've got, you've got to be on the move the whole time, knowing your responsibilities, boys. Remember, the ball's on the deck and we're playing our football. And it can't, we can't play football for 90 minutes. We can play football for 80, though, right? If the ball's on the deck and we're getting it around the outside, they're going to have a long day at the office, OK? If it's going long direct and they're winning headers, if we're playing into pockets, it'll be our long day at the office, because that's how they want to play. All right, boys? Do me proud today, I know you will. Come on. <laughs> A non-league talent scout wouldn't have to work too hard to figure out what Dorking's pattern of play is usually like, and so it proves in the opening stages of the match as the home side switch from one flank to the other and hit the wing backs before looking to break forwards. One pass, one pass! And equally, it doesn't take long for Hungerford to show what their game plan is. Fuck it out, Fuck's sake! Of course ain't fucking alright! Is that the tone riff? The whole, if they're allowed the whole game ref, that's a fucking long day. Still, it's the visitors who create the first opening of the match. Good interplay between Jake Evans and Nana Kai is thwarted by the toe of Kane Wills. Oh, 
Right, shaping it. Oh, sitting, sitting. Sit, Bobby. There are chances coming at both ends. Callum Keeley and Barry Fuller combined down the left-hand side, allowing Alfie Rutherford a chance to face up against Hungerford keeper Luke Kearney. Dan Gallagher drives forwards, only to lose the ball to Callum Wilmoth, who feeds in Kai. Dan! 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 Dan, listen to me! That's fine, just give it early! Dorking are working down the left side like a human spleen, with Nick Wheeler and Bobby Joe Taylor testing the away defence with driving runs. A late challenge on Keeley goes unpunished, yet the Dorking players aren't protesting anywhere near as loudly as their management team. Mark has also noticed that they haven't heeded his warning about playing through the middle. Baz, Baz, every ball we've lost is centre mid. Get the fucking ball out of centre mid. Baz, go on higher. Ed! Ed! Keeping the ball out left certainly seems effective, with Taylor moving into Wheeler's space and testing the fullback. Hungerford midfielder Callum Wilmoth epitomises his team's ethos, which, for want of a better phrase, is pure shithousery. With Taylor running at full speed, there's little town can do without warranting a booking, except to pack the penalty area. The early foul on Jimmy Mewitz has ended his game, and he's replaced by Nile McManus. Lot of afters, ref. Lot of afters. I'm not, I'm not enjoying it. He's not enjoying Alfie forgetting about the throw-in routines either. Alfie! Back on the left wing, Taylor and Wheeler are causing too many problems for Reese Taylor to live with. Hey! Hey! Get on him, that's a fucking card. This has got to be low and hard whipped. Just like that. Fuck me. Barry Fuller was a two-inch growth spurt away from putting Dorking ahead. It's been a few minutes since Hungerford hurt anybody, so Keith Emerson soon rectifies that. Fucking hell! Lino! Fucking Lino! The fucking forearm smashed him. The Dorking players are too nice to complain to the referee about the assault, and Emerson goes unpunished. Dude! Fucking say something, man! Roughing up their opponents and slowing the play down is Hungerford's top priority. Can do that! Back on the left wing spin-off show, Wheeler finds Keeley from a throw-in as instructed pre-game with Keeley receiving effectively. Keep the ball! Get us up, get us up now! Hungerford are camped out like Dale Winton at a music festival and Dorking are launching wave after wave of attack. James Rusby gets away with a questionable challenge on Luke Moore and Hungford are clinging on like those old rubbery toys you used to throw at windows. You remember those things that cling to the windows and kind of slide down? Anyway, Ryan Seeger tries to lob Lee Worgan from the halfway line, but the keeper recovers in time. When Alfie Rutherford finally remembers to do a shit flick from a throw-in, Louis McGrory gives away yet another foul. That's his eighth foul, ref! Fucking hell, ref! A surge into the box from Niall McManus is the closest Dorking have come to opening up their opponents. Barry Fuller's resulting sweet, sweet drive almost nestles in the corner. Fuller then throws to Keeley's feet and Keith Emerson finds himself in the hot seat. <laughs> the kids are going to love that reference. We've done it. Good. And it weren't either. Can't do that, ref. Can't do that. Can't do that. 
a gloved hand in the face of the lively Fuller sends the Dorking captain into a peak of anger and the frustration boils over like an abandoned bowl of rice on a gas cooker at Mark 9. Get him off me! In front of the away fans, Bobby Joe Taylor prepares himself for the penalty. Fortunately, I think the ref's working it out. And, and to be fair, he's worked it out because of them, not necessarily because of you. I think Niles had a good impact managing the ref. But, but I think he's now on it, OK? Now, what you can't do is have a street fight with these boys, OK? Ain't going to work for us. What we've got to do is keep doing it. Moro, fucking brilliant. Bobby, just do that in a minute, man. You know what I'm like? Bobby, that's your best staff so far for us. Fantastic. Keely. What did I tell you about them throws? Fine margins. What did I tell you? I told him before the game. He hasn't lost one of them. He backs into them. They can't deal with it. Alf, you need to be more switched on because you're not doing the flicks. And I know you might be going, oh, we're going back there. Don't matter. You know what's going to win this game, don't you? I reckon you'll know the same thing as me. Winning this game is going to be how fucking tough we are. This is about being tough, boys, and not stupid. We've got the goal. Brilliant penalty under pressure. We've got the goal. They're on borrowed time. You need to make sure you are on the appeal more with the ref, OK? Even little things on the appeal. Everything's got to be louder, bolder, because I think the ref's getting pissed off with them. OK? So I'll just say to the ref, I've told the boys to let you deal with it. You need to deal with it. The linesmen need to, need to help them out as well. You lot just got to be stronger. And you are being stronger. It's been brilliant in there. We're winning all the battles. You three are winning the battle in there. There's a couple of things. The five is cheating on their corners. He wants to hold all sorts of things. The five dog, yeah? Right? And the nine falls over. We've got to tell the ref this. I'll tell him now. You've got to tell him. Ref, nine falls over, five's kicking out. He's a nightmare. I used the example last week, Floyd Mayweather. You've got to be a Mayweather here. You've got to outclass them and not get involved in their shit. That's really important. The defensively have been brilliant. We've, we've forced loads of chances. Keep the simplicity there. We're one nil up now. Manage the game. Come on, boys. Come on. To the surprise of nobody, Hungerford start the second half with a game-slowing foul. And while the referee does get his cards out, one can't help but feel the game would be better to watch if he'd done that a bit earlier. Still, we didn't exactly pay to get in. Barry Fuller finds the imperious Ed Harris with the free kick, but the firm defending stops his squared header from reaching a teammate. Frustrated that McGrory has finally won a ball cleanly, Noel McManus shows that the fouls can swing both ways. The resulting free kick gives Dorking an opportunity to counter against a team that is usually found inside their own penalty area. On your own! On your own! One on one! No, can't get out of his way! Can't get out of his way! Two on one, Bob! Two on one! Two on one! What's he giving a foul for? When Alfie Rutherford collides with Callum Wilmoth, it gives the master of shithousery a chance to break up the play by pretending it's really hard to stand up. I think he's come through the back of Alfie. Keep the keep moving. Net. Relax, round the corner. Go! Yeah. Go! You're fucking ten yards away! It might be that the referee simply got bored of having to give free kicks. It's the only explanation we've come up with for why he let Reese Taylor's late challenge go. It's a sequence of events that allows Ryan Seeger to tee up Callum Wilmoth, who drives from range. Oh my God, how have we fucking done that? As good a finish as it was, knee sliding on fake grass is always a terrible idea. <laughs> Wilmoth's strike somehow slips through Fuller's legs and squeezes between Wargan's hand and post. No, no, foul, mate. Fucking from behind again. I don't know why he's looking in there, though. Deliver, deliver! Both teams are reverting to type. Dorking are throwing crosses around like an angry priest, 
and Hungerford are lumping the ball away like an angry ball lumping person. Oh, just lumping it. Callum Keely tries the old backing in from a throwing trick, but again can't beat Luke Kenny at his near post. A series of corners provides some hope and a rather weak penalty shout. Seconds, boys. With the game on a knife edge, Keith Emerson drums the ball up the battlefield and is a lucky man to find his teammate. Lee Wargan's unconvincing clearance and Callum Wilmoth's pressure sees Hungerford come away with a rare attack. Wilmoth plays in Nanakai and he has a chance to make it 2-1. Goal shocks Dorking, and they find themselves on the ropes like an anti vaxxer at a science convention. Shoot! Down, warm up down there, and talk to the line, on, mate. Is that okay? Yeah, he's missed the foul for the goal. He's missed an offside there. While Special Agent Sammy accepts his mission down the touchline, Dorking are counter-attacking. Drive! Go on, Alfie, on your own! On your own! On your own! Ref! Ref! Hungerford have managed more fouls than a site manager at a battery farm, but the referee has done little to dissuade them from doing so. Fuck me. No, no, mate. Such the biggest foul you've ever seen, mate. And they score from it. No, but it was. At least just I weren't looking. I don't mind that. So a shouts is finished. A missed header from Mbonkwe gives Walken the opportunity to get another counter going, and Dorking sense the opportunity to get level. Can't pick it up where he can. Get up! Fucking get up! That's fucking. With Rutherford coming within 12 inches of him, Kearney sees an opportunity to commence Operation Get the Physio on as much as possible. I think he might be alright, love. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Keely! If he does watch, check it for him in a minute. Check it. Come on, boys! Loads of time! Loads of time! Dorking are putting the away side under relentless pressure, but they can't find a way through. Bobby this side! Bobby this side! This side! Go on, Nicky, son! If in doubt, leave it to Wheeler. Take him on! Take him on! Reese Tyler is the next town player to decide he needs to chat with the physio. Quite why the referee doesn't shuffle him off the pitch is beyond us. Ironically, it's Hungerford that wastes the better chances. Whoa. Look who's back on the pitch. Ed Harris could run all night, <laughs> but when he accidentally treads on his opponent's Fuck leg, the outcome is boringly shit. predictable. Fucking hell. Guess who's back? Back again. No, it's fine. With just minutes to go, Luke Moore's pinpoint free kick finds Alfie Rutherford's head. Alfie's top, mate. Alfie. Got to do better. And soon after, Nick Wheeler's devilish cross causes havoc. Barry Fuller lifts his shot over the bar and Dorkin begin to accept their fate. Keith Emerson, meanwhile, fears he will never play the drums again. Even their, even their manager's telling the physio not to go on now. 
Another cross to Alfie, this time from the relentless Fuller, gives Dorking another chance. Ricky, get the ball! With seven minutes of injury time to be played, Hungerford hold the ball in the corner. Deep into injury time, Keith Emerson has a hoedown in the box with Sammy Air Lab. Core, we really hope he's okay. Bobby, mate, I'll do the talking, not you. All right, son, get sat down. You've had a good day, and that's all you need to worry about. Everyone in, yeah? We're going back out to warm down, okay? We just want to take the sting out of it, okay? Listen, listen. There's absolutely no drama in that situation, I'm afraid to say. That's how it is. Right, so let me be the judge of disappointment. Let me be the judge of it, right? Saturday with two points dropped. I'll get that, okay? Today, you know what happens, right? Football comes in waves. Listen, Bobby, you listen to me, yeah? Yeah? Football comes in waves. You know, quite often you get out what you put in the game after the game after that. I go and watch teams. I go and watch the shut. Is the door shut? Shut this one then. Listen, listen, so it, listen, boys, you only ever get one chance to beat a side and that's when the game's going on, right? So they, that's, that, that's, I'll just take that as a compliment, genuinely, because it's, it's, it's the fourth game of the season and they beat Dawkins away from home in the biggest smash and grab scene to man, right? So they're going to celebrate it and, and that's how they should be, okay? I've, the, only, the only constructive stuff I'll give you is, I thought we were very slow to get onto the ref about their antics. I thought it took us until Niall came on to even slowly get onto the situation. By that point, Keely had been forearm smashed off the ball. There was little fouls to 3D8, and I thought we had to react. Just listen, boys, tune into me, please. Just look at me. Yeah, this is my paid time, it's your paid time, your employees. Okay, I'm not talking to myself. Right? So I'll, I'll just give you the only constructive bit I'll give you, the only constructive bit I'll give you is, I thought we were very slow to react to their antics. I thought it took half hour, and I thought in the end the ref made his own mind up on them. I don't think we made the ref mind up. That's the only takeout I'll give you. They won the game in the only fucking way they could. Honestly, that is, if, if, if they gave you their manual, it would say, <laughs> go long, Try and get little bits off Seager. Cheat for 90 minutes. They're wasting time for minute one. For minute fucking one. So what I would say is we've got a very experienced team here. Just got to ask yourselves the question whether we, you know, utilise our experience as good as a team like that who are not experienced in many areas, but to a man know their job. They know what they've got to do. They've got to fall over. They've got to cheat. They know when to time waste. They know when to speed it up. The shape, the pattern, Bobby, for an excellent game, kept it really fucking on script, made a big difference. I thought, I can't criticise a player. I can't. I can't, who, who, who's criticisable today? Obviously that's disappointing, we get that. I won't fucking sleep a week, that's how it is. But I can't wait to go out there again. So we'll have to let them have their day. But that, that's what it means to them. Fucking let them have it. But so much of that was excellent. 
And if we get, you know, a fucking toe on something or a head on something, we're not even in here. We're out there with the fans. That's fine margins, that's football. Okay, boys? That's how it is. You need to go and warm down, please. Bobby, the, uh, someone wants to interview, I think. Boys, we're going for a cool down. Did we miss that bit or what? Come on, lads. Bobby, we're going for a cool down, yeah? That's cool. Let's go, boys. Show some class. Don't go near their supporters and shit. Just get out of the way. Go the other side. Don't give them any fucking rises, okay? Nicky, come on, son. Anyone got anything constructive apart from the four points out of 12, one a game, relegation form? No, it was a positive for me. I thought no, no was very great good. positive. Um, you know, um, Nicky Weed has done as much as he can do. I thought yeah. he showed some bollocks, some determination. I mean, he can't put the ball, he, he couldn't have put it, if he if he'd come over his hand, he couldn't have put it there better. Um, but um, I think we talk about it all day. I think the fact of the matter is, it was a resolute performance. It, 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 you know, for me, it, it deserved, it deserved better. But you've got to credit them for the way they, you know, but to be fair, we missed chances. It wasn't the case they're defending, we missed chances. Oh, oh man. That was brutal, that. And then the celebrating in the end, I was oh, going, my, I, was, I couldn't cope with it banging the walls and screaming oh, and singing. Oh, mate, that's what, to beat us, I thought, oh, oh, it's I a know, cup final. I know, I'm fucking fuming. I know. I know. Enjoy actually, it, though, yeah? Yeah, well, it, the whole day has been great, mate, yeah, but I just, it was tough watching that. Because there were so many times you were coming, you were yeah. rolling, you were coming, and they just got one counter, and then the other counter, and I'm oh, like, no! Man. It's all over, I'm just going, that's the fucking, at the moment, no luck, that's how it is, I mate. I know. Okay, well, I'm Callum Wilmoth, aka Calzone, up the G&K Builders. And we're here today, just finished against Dorking Wanderers in the league. So, yeah, that's what I'm doing here today. And how'd that go for you? First half, not the greatest. Coming at half-time, 1-0 down. I thought we played quite well first half and it was a soft penalty. Um, but we didn't let that deter us of our mentality and our togetherness. We knew there was chances in the game. Come out second half, give it a good go. And rightfully so, I feel we deserved a victory today. I got the first one to make it 1-0 and then set up the second. But I ain't scored in three years, so as the highlights may tell, I've got a few grass burns on my knees and I will never slide on a 4G again. No, no, yeah, it was a little bit of moisture on the 4G, but after about a metre, the friction dried out and that was, that was my knees gone. What we want to do in-house, we want to go and match what we did last season. That's, that's our expectations, we know what we are. We're a small, smallest club with a small budget, but we've got the togetherness and the hard work and a bit of passion that we, I find personally not many of the other teams in our league do have. We've got no big money earners, no big egos. We're all here for a reason. We just want to put Ungerford on the map at this level and continue to strive into to progress and sustain ourselves at this level. What do you do for a living? What do you do outside of football? Uh, I'm a brickie. So tomorrow morning, I've, well, I worked yesterday. We played Saturday, I worked yesterday. I could have worked today, but obviously football. Tomorrow I'll be back on, on site with the boys, smashing down the bricks, twisting and turning, my hamstrings are in bits. But it's life of a non-league football artist. We don't have the luxury of training three, four times a week. We get two hours on a Thursday, two hours on a Tuesday, game day on a Saturday. But what we do, we work our nuts off. And it goes to show we're small but we're mighty, that's how we say it, Ungerford, small but mighty. And we're looking for more days like this on the road. Put it this way, he, refs played 12 minutes added time in the game without one injury. That is how fucking good they were, wasting time. I mean, fucking take your hat off. I'm not, I'm not even being facetious, I just think, you know, the refs obviously dealt with it in a way where he's adding it on. So we've had the extra time. Of course it's breaking up the game, it's... And, and you know, I, I, would, I wouldn't want my players to be... We're a very honest team, we're a good side, we just, want to, we just want to get on with it. But, you know, competition football, you, you have to be aware of the strengths. The strengths of those boys were going to be exactly what they were. Get in your face, rough you up, and if the rest going to let a lot go, and, you know, it was going to be their advantage. But someone just said to me, you're worried about not scoring goals, that many goals. I said, well, you know, Jason Pryor, James McShane, Matt Briggs, Wes Fogden, Josh Taylor, I'm like, they scored about 25 pre-season between them, you know, and we haven't got one of those and we're still putting a good performance, fans are here. So I can't, you can't, you know, as much as I will sulk like a fucking baby, um, it'll be overnight, do you know what I mean? Because we have to, we can't be licking wounds even. There ain't no wounds to lick. 
the, the, the right, the, the, the correct way to be is to go right, shitload of positives, um, big learn with that game management situation, and we'll take that onto Saturday. That's, that's it. There's nothing more to talk about than that. Well, we could talk about needing likes and subscribes and stuff like that because that helps us grow. You've heard this. If you're listening to the end, you've heard this before. Instead, maybe give me some sympathy because I had to narrate this with a cold and it really hurt my throat.